Hello, my name is Marion. In the blog world, I'm known as Miss Mustard Seed. And today I'm going to show you how to mix milk paint. And actually I'm going to show Christy how to mix milk paint. And we've just invited you through video to watch us. Um, Christy started working with me as my online shop manager and creative assistant. She's also a stylist, photographer, blogger at Rosemary and Time. And, uh, but she's just starting out with milk paint. So I thought this is a great opportunity to have her um, learn. And then we'd love to invite you to follow her milk paint journey as she learns and hopefully loves using milk paint, hopefully, right? <laughs> so we're gonna show you two different methods. The first one is mixing milk paint just with a cup and a stir stick. That's how I mix my milk paint most often. So that's the method we're gonna go with today. We are using Flow Blue Milk Paint. So you'll need milk paint, you'll need water, a cup, a stir stick, and a measuring cup as well. We're just gonna mix a small amount, so we're using a fourth cup measuring spoon, and um, we're going to mix equal parts water to milk paint. So we'll put the milk paint in first, so go for it. And a tip when you're using the bags of milk paint is sometimes the milk paint can get kind of crusted into the zipper pouch. So just take a wet cloth and wipe it to clean it so you're able to seal the bag once, um, once you're done with it. Okay, so Christy's got... Good. Yep, she's got a quarter cup. So it's not, you know, it wasn't 100% full. That's okay, it doesn't have to be precise. This isn't chemistry, it's fun, <laughs> it's painting. Okay, and then you can do a fourth a cup of water. And again, it's okay if it's not 100% precise. The thing about mixing milk paint is it's not an exact science, and I know that will drive some people crazy, but it's a lot like baking. When you're working with pies or pastries or um, bread doughs, it just really depends on the humidity of the day, even, um, the, the climate that you're in, if you're mixing milk paint in like Colorado, it's really, where it's really dry, you might need to add more water. If you're in Florida and it's really humid, you might not need to add as much. So if you start with one part water, one part powder, and then work from there, that's a, that's a good rule of thumb. So you can take the stir stick and go ahead and mix it, mix it around. And when you're mixing with a stir stick or a spoon or whatever you're using, just make sure that you're really getting the sides of the, um, the cup so that you're getting all of those little bits of limestone and chalk and all the things that make up milk paint um, that are sort of will stick to the bottom. And we're going to show you a different method where you add the water first and then put the powder in. So you can really do it either way. I sort of prefer to add the powder and then the water. Um, I feel like I have kind of more control over that. I can gauge it better, but it's also good to add the water first and then the powder to it so that um, the paint dissolves a little bit better. Um, so what's the consistency that we're looking for? Good question. Okay, so you're, you want it to be, it's going to be thinner than like a latex paint or an acrylic paint. It just doesn't have that thick body, but it shouldn't be thin and runny. So. Pull your paint stick up and see like how it's running off. So it, it is a little drippy, but I think that when we get it on the brush, it might be okay. okay. So what we're gonna do with this, once she's mixed it, it's pretty thoroughly mixed. You'll be able to see that there are a few little clumps on the stir stick and on the rim of the cup. And that's okay, that's totally normal. So it's kind of like pancake batter. You have to let go of the lumpiness. <laughs> you just have to be at peace with the lumps. And um, so we're gonna let that sit. I have found oftentimes it'll look a little bit too thin for me, but then once I let it sit, it will thicken up a little bit. So we're gonna walk away from that for a minute and we'll do the other mixing method and then we'll see how that looks. So I've already added a third a cup of water to the mason jar. So you can put in a third a cup of okay. the milk paint. And Christy was so clever, we were trying to figure out how to how to put the milk paint in this jar without spilling it everywhere. 
Um, so we created this little, uh, just a really simple paper cone. So that's a good tip if you're working with a mason jar that has a smaller lid, not one of the wide mouth lids, um, then you can just make a paper, paper funnel so that you're able to get all the milk paint in without making such a mess. And if it is a challenge to, if you're using a larger measuring cup and it's a challenge to get it into the bag and really get the powder out, then you can just dump it in as Christy's doing. Hopefully We're kind of make a mess. <laughs> We're kind of to the bottom of the bag here, so makes it a little bit harder. But yeah, that's why we have paper down though. When you're working with a powdered paint and mixing it yourself, it can be a little messy. So don't do this over your like heirloom <laughs> dining room tablecloth or something. You know, put some paper down. Um, the nice thing is though is milk paint is all natural. It's only made of five all natural ingredients. So even though it is a little bit messy, it's safe for kids to mix. They might need a, a little bit of help. The mason jar method is a great method for yeah. kids though, because then they just you know put on the lid and shake. Although I'd probably use a, a plastic jar if I was working with um, younger kids anyway. So we're gonna get the lid on nice and tight and then just shake it around, give it some some agitation so that the milk paint mixes thoroughly. Um, it's gonna cling to the sides and that's okay. And you may see, once you're done mixing, you may see some lumps in it still. It shouldn't be like really clumpy lumpy though. It yeah. shouldn't be a total mess, but it's okay if you see a few little, you know, a few little pieces of the milk paint. That's just milk paint that hasn't fully absorbed the water yet. And as you work with it, it's going to, to be absorbed. And off, oftentimes too, you can work out a lot of those um, little lumps and things with your brush. So, um, so yeah, it looks good. Now, when you mix it with the um, mason jar method, uh, you will get more bubbles in it. So just let it sit and kind of rest a little bit um, as well. So let's go back to the milk paint that you mixed with the stir stick. Okay. And we're going to test out the consistency of it by sticking a brush in. That's just the absolute best way to know if the paint mixture is what you want. And so you can see it's still coming off of the brush, but it's coming off in more of a stream. Yeah. It's not it's dribbling off, so it has thickened a little bit and then go ahead and brush it on and now are you surprised at how thick it is yeah given how, yeah, yeah. how thin it it ha it definitely feels thinner so okay. as you can see it's going on nice and thick so don't don't freak out by it if it feels like it's a little bit thin in the cup that's just because it's not what you're used to with the really thick latex paints and some of the acrylic paints and things so and as you can see great yeah beautiful coverage well i thought it. i was gonna have to definitely do a couple of coats with it to even get any color from it but Right. Now, if you did, since we're painting raw wood, if you did want to make a stain, maybe mm -hmm. you wanted more of the grain to show through, you could just add more water. So maybe okay. do two parts water to one part milk paint. Um, I don't think you'd want to go much thicker than that, though, okay. I don't, unless you were doing some special technique. But gotcha. um, okay, and let's test this one out. Maybe paint it on the other side of the board and see how this one turned out. Now, I'm going to give you a what if scenario here i'm adding more water to it so let's say you mixed it up and it's way too thin oh there we go so the, the mason jar method worked it worked <laughs> it's always a good thing right so they both turned out exactly the same yeah. you wouldn't be able to tell so you can use whichever preference you know whichever mixing method you like whichever one you're more comfortable with i oftentimes just do this because i really like to feel to feel the paint right. um, you can see it mixing better in there too exactly when you have the lid on you have to kind of take the lid off check it out right. see how it is now if if you're mixing it and it's just so put your brush in that and kind of see how that feels so it's yeah. really, yeah, I can't even keep it on. It's really watery. It's dripping off the brush. If you're seeing that, then just add more powder to it until okay. you get to a consistency that's, that's closer to what we had with the one to one part ratio. Um, and then if you have paint that is just, it's clumpy, it's lumpy, it's not, it, it's, as you're trying to brush it on the brush is just yeah. dragging <laughs> and it's not, 
Then just add a little bit more water. Um, always add just a little bit at a time, maybe about a teaspoon at a time, and give it another stir. Dip it in again and brush it on and see how it works. So that is how you mix milk paint. It's just like simple, easy, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I know a lot of people are intimidated when they get this powdered milk paint. They have to add water and um, it's you don't need to be intimidated by it. It's really very simple. So thanks, Christy, no and we look forward to following uh, your journey and see how you get along with milk paint. I'm excited about it. Good.